Merry Christmas, Foot Clan. On today's episode, we break down the rest of the matchups. We give you some unfortunate holiday news that you've surely heard by now. And just because I lost last week's face-off, that's not going to stop me from shining. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave a comment. Enjoy your Christmas. Good luck this Sunday. Foot Clan, when you sort out the 2022 budget, think about this. You can save 72% on restaurant quality meals with HelloFresh. You don't even need to hit the grocery store. Get 16 free meals plus three gifts with the code FOOTBALLER16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLER16. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! <laughs> To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Christmas time, everybody. Ho, ho, ho. The Christmas Bear. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Andy Holloway with you. It is Christmas Eve. And week 16. Probably bringing you. Who knows, man? Yeah. Who I, knows? It's going to be an interesting weekend. Looking forward to. The break and the family time as well. Taking my son to his first football game on Christmas Day. And we are excited to get into the rest of the matchups. We got the Wheel of Shame. Mm. I'm not spinning the wheel today. Yeah, I Jay, will be. Jay Grizz, are you spinning the... No, he's not spinning the wheel today. Yes. Uh, Would you like to... I know what you want to get off your chest right now, which is that you barely lost again. It's my second loss... Uh, in the past few weeks, which those two losses combined, I think we're about three points. Yeah, that's great. Oh, just that is that is my <laughs> that's my fantasy. Season. Look, every um, but a loss is a loss. I was gonna say people people say the difference between like glory and shame mm -hmm. is just a point, um, or so, sometimes not even not a full even point. a full point. We have news to get into, including um, some some news that I am very displeased about i'm uh, you're a you're a big man for showing up for today's show after <laughs> what we encountered well the truth is is we are recording this very late on the 23rd because we have given because it's christmas eve. christmas eve off to everybody <laughs> so we're going through the rest of the matchups and um hopefully nothing too insane happens in the fantasy football world but um but we'll just We'll just hope for a we Christmas will, miracle. We will persevere yeah. and move forward. Foot Clan Friday. Each week we give an item away from pristineauction.com to a supporter of the show over at jointhefoot.com. So uh, this Christmas, definitely a big thank you to everybody supporting the podcast at jointhefoot.com. And this week we're giving away a Sign Nick Chubb jersey. And that goes to I am Groot over on Patreon. Now, thank you. Where are you at um, with like the need that Marvel, they went with Vin Diesel. Like they took a big actor. Um, I don't know that you, would you call Vin A list? I mean, Fast and Furious is very popular. So whatever, we'll go A list, maybe B plus at the, at the worst. For but the you, I am Groot, but line. you you put Vin Diesel in the role of uh, of Groot, where all he says is I am Groot, and it's like someone else out there, like a starving actor, in could the have world, had could job. have had their name on a Marvel credit and and changed their lives, and they're like, no, we need Vin Diesel. Well, and clearly they had to pay more money for Vin Diesel. Yes, but, and so what what makes me laugh about that the most is the you know every time a movie premieres. All the actors from the movie get like late night talk show right. opportunities. So Vin Diesel is doing the tour. Like he's going around. Was he really? Yes. He gets interviewed on the basis of Groot, the acting job. 
I mean, I'm not. And I've always found that to be perplexing. I mean, I understand. He did oh. a great job. Great job. Uh, there, he sh- he shows some depth, some character with the variations of I am Groot, but it's just such a funny thing to me <laughs> to get such a big time celebrity to be your one phrase it's actor. A, it's a voice acting role, right? Which, uh, which it, uh, Owen Wilson from Cars. Okay, you play the whole movie. But you do the voice. That's sure. different. Did no. you know that? Uh, uh, I believe that Vin Diesel was the Iron Giant. Sure, there's apparently a very secret cash flow opportunity for him. Well, do you, you remember the Iron Giant? Were you in barely, on that as a kid? Barely. Oh, that's yeah. a that's one of those cartoons that I was not in uh, as a child, but a lot of uh, grown men weep now when they watch that. So movie. I so to be clear, are we taking something away from him with this oper- this role that he had? Maybe he's just the best Groot possible. Do you I think don't know. they tested a bunch of other B plus list <laughs> actors for this? I don't, I don't know. All right. Um. Thank you for supporting the show. Nick Chubb jersey going out this week. Head to pristineoption.com. <laughs> put that put that on my uh, demo. Ship that over to Disney, please. See, you've done some you've done some voice work. Yeah, I was available. Look, this this is what I was This is a personal attack. This is all I was saying is I was available for the role of Groot. You know who else could have done it? That's his, not bad. His English is not very it's good. It's not bad. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Hey, Brooks, was this giant ornament on my desk earlier today? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know who's new? Krampus. Krampus is new? He was there, too. Oh. See what I mean? What? We don't pay attention. What? Guys, this is all a big distraction. Uh, Dalvin Cook. Uh, A little, little quick on the trigger there, Al. Oh, he was ready. I'm surprised he's not playing the Hopkins celebration music. I would never. Yes, but he, you yes would. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Dalvin <laughs> Cook's on the COVID list. He will not play. Not he, celebrating the man's illness. But he may I, not play again in week 17. So he may be done. Who are the top three picks off the board this year? Who were they? Yeah. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. Okay, gone. Dalvin Cook. Gone. And who was three? I mean, it, was it, it, Henry in some leagues, Zeke in others. Kamara. Kamara. So, yeah, this is cool. Um, Madison's going to start. If you had Madison, you're fine. You really yep. are. You're, you're, you're mostly fine. Yep. And, and if you don't, like me. Well, unfortunately for you. You want to punch Al in the face. Uh, a, another league manager in, in, in our league of record, they drafted Madison late. And I believe they've held him the entire year. Uh, so benefiting from those spot appearances. But this is why we, you know, once you get to week – Eight, week nine, you start talking about you have to make sure you have your insurance running backs on your team. And this is this is devastating. This really sucks for fantasy football. Uh, but Alexander Madison is... Oh, did you say Alexander? No, I did not. Uh, but Mr. Madison, yeah, I mean, hopefully he's okay because he just got activated from COVID. Yeah, and uh, he was an unvaccinated, so he had to miss a certain amount of time. Hopefully, he's good to go. Because if he's good to go, smash play. Madison, um, Madison will uh, <laughs> turn into a league-winning type of running back. Al, more than do you likely. do you really feel good winning this way? Do you want to win this way? I want to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see what happens. And on, look, don't worry, I have Jarrett Patterson. I mean. Is that a, a sound as intimidating on your end as it did it coming out of my mouth? No. Mm. Jarrett Patterson. This guy is real heavy on the T sounds. Yeah. Yeah, still no. <laughs> All right. Uh, Taysom Hill, Trevor Simeon on the COVID list. Suddenly the Dolphins defense on Monday night looks amazing. Quarterback Ian Book will be starting for the New Orleans Saints. I'll be honest. I didn't know that person existed before this news. Um they scored nine points with Taysom Hill last week. The Dolphins' defense has been great. Uh, they won. They won, and then um, Alvin Kamara was awful. So, what do you? What are your expectations for Alvin Kamara in this game against a good Dolphins defense? Hope he touches the ball twenty times. Yeah, James Conner game time decision <sighs> hasn't been practicing. Thankfully, he's he's Saturday, so you'll you don't have to make a. Terrible Sunday decision. Optimism around Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey clearing COVID protocols. Okay, okay. So we'll, I mean, if they're in, they're in. 
Yes. And if they're out, you cry, and then you have to play somebody other than Kelsey, which will be a far inferior option. Correct. DJ Moore, game time decision. Uh, okay. Is there any chance you are messing with Robbie Anderson if he's the last man I'd, standing? I'd consider it. Ramondre Stevenson on Thursday didn't practice. We'll have to pay attention to that report today. Damian Harris looks like he'll be back. And you can go from there. Mm -hmm. Buffalo has been struggling against the run. And then Brandon Cooks was placed on the COVID reserve list. I think we mentioned this earlier in the week. But it does take the, you know, he he's their main weapon. He's the one kind of viable above average. He's the best above average weapon they have. Sure. And maybe the only. Yeah. So Davis Mills is yeah. going to have a harder time with that. I'm hopeful long-term for Nico Collins. Jointhefoot.com. You'll get the Injury Blitz podcast, the Game Day Alerts, Week 16. Mike, you're going to be live again, aren't you? I will. I will be here on Sunday uh, giving you my best. Yeah. Uh, today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Let's get back into the forecast. Fantasy Forecast. We covered the Browns, Packers, Colts, Cardinals, the Christmas games on yesterday's episode. Yes, if you have a member of the Browns, Packers, Colts, Cardinals, a.k.a. ChristmasFootball.com, please remove them from your flex. Sunday games, we covered the Lions, Falcons, Ravens, Bengals, Rams, Vikings, Bills, Patriots, Jags, Jets, Giants, Eagles yesterday. Seven games left. Also have our uh, fantasy face-off lineups to reveal to you today. Mm-hmm. But let's begin with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 10 and 4, taking on the Carolina Panthers, 5 and 9. The DK Sportsbook line have the Buccaneers, 10 point favorites on the road against the uh, tripping down the cliff Carolina Panthers. The over under is 44 points. The book is not concerned about Chris Godwin being out and Mike Evans possibly not playing. The Carolina Panthers, Goodness. the statements that came out this week, Matt Rule said Cam Newton will start and have a major role, but Sam Darnold will play at some point. Huh. So, um, <clears throat> thoughts on Matt Rule right now? Uh, Matt Rule is... Maybe Joe Brady wasn't the problem. Matt, well, yeah, it, that's also, it, that's possible, but it's, it's more than possible that the quarterback position is just uh, the big problem here. It is the most important position in all of professional sports, professional team sports, and Matt Rule does not have an answer. And this it's I get not having the answer, but the way that he has handled the last the last few weeks of like talking about how multiple quarterbacks are gonna play, it's just it doesn't inspire confidence in your decision making ability. I mean like going be, in and out. Go, go in and out. You just just go the like Coach Meyer. Put Cam Newton out there and when the team fails you just lump all of the blame onto Cam Newton. He's there for that at this point. <laughs> um, Chuba Hubbard only had nine opportunities last week. He was the running back 50. He's not an option here. No. Amir Abdul is not really an option either. DJ Moore is a game time decision. If you start, you know, if he's active, you're going to be afraid of a re injury and you're going to have some rotating quarterback situation. I think we did it. I think we got to the, the first 100%. Don't play anybody game. That's for one. That's team. wild. Yeah. I mean, would you agree? I. They're two and nine in their last eleven games. Yeah. I mean, if if DJ Moore is active, I think he's still a he's a still a flex play. Do to do they play each other twice over the last three weeks? These two teams. Yeah, they play in week eighteen. Oh gosh, the the slide's going to continue. So you have a you have Tom Brady, and then you have a world of question marks around this because. Evans didn't practice Thursday. AB is supposed to be back. You don't have um, Leonard Fournette. You don't have Chris Godwin. It's easy to say Brady's going to have a chip on his shoulder. He wants to come out and wants to win the game. DK Sportsbook has him with 27 points. Problem I have is they don't need to do a lot to win this game, probably. Yeah. So, you know, we've seen every, we've seen a, a in Tampa, we've seen Tom Brady play half, a half before. It, you know, and and you don't have what the, you're talking about last year, yeah, against Detroit, I and mean, and earlier this year he didn't play the fourth quarter of a game. So I'm normally when that happens, you've you've smoked them. But I could see the, here's the worst case scenario for Tampa Bay in this game for fantasy purposes. 
First touchdown of the game, it's Ronald Jones. Mm-hmm. Okay, Ronald well, Jones. That, that's great if you have Ronald Jones. Yes, that's fine. I'm I'm for Brady. Okay. So Ronald Jones scores, and you know he's not going to catch the football because he can't, and neither can Keyshawn Vaughn. That's why they signed Lev Bell. That's the only reason they did that, is no one else can catch it. But you go out, you score on the ground, you score on defense, you kick a field goal before the half. It's seventeen nothing, and how many? You know what's your upside for Brady on at that point going forward? And can he accomplish it with Antonio Brown, Tyler Johnson, Brashad Perryman, and Gronkowski? Uh, I, uh, unless I have an incredible backup option, Joe I've, Burrow. Oh, good. Tyler Huntley. I, man, the the Tyler Huntley versus Tom Brady is the ultimate courage test of like process wise. Huntley is probably the better play, but the the thing like what you're the picture you're painting, I get it, of maybe they go up and Tom Brady hasn't done a lot and they don't need to, but the Bruce Arians M.O. has always been full throttle. It's if we're going to score and we're we're going to keep scoring, and if, if, the, if it actually gets to the point where the score is high enough where Tom Brady's not playing a fourth quarter, it's because it's like against Miami. They scored 45 points, and if they score that many, Tom Brady is definitely a part of it, and he, He's made I mean he made some things happen up in New England without elite weapons. What if I told you still has Gronk. What if I told you that the Carolina Panthers haven't given up a big game to the fantasy quarterback position despite the slide since week six? Yep. So who's you, what quarterbacks are we talking about there? So seventeen to the Giants, whatever. Eight to Atlanta. Okay. Six to New England. Three points to Arizona. And they gave up 23 to Washington, Taylor Heineke. Mm. Gave up 13 to Tua, 11 to Atlanta. And then last week it was 21.8 to the Bills. Man. I, I'm i still – I'm playing Tom Brady as a top 12 guy. Okay. that's I guess that's the question. Um, top 12, though, is not where he's been. He's, he's, he's on the Correct. cusp of top five, top two. Yes. Brashad Perryman, Tyler Johnson – are you taking any shots with them in this game? Uh, we still need more news for Brashad Perryman. He was on the COVID list. We are told by the last update from Coach Arians that he's very close to coming off of that list. Um, I mean, the last time we saw Perryman was the heroics, right, of the, the overtime Tyler, touchdown. Tyler Johnson played 95% of snaps, seven targets last week. He would be... If it's not Antonio Brown, that's where I would go. Gronkowski is my start of the week at the tight end position. Yeah, he should be great. The Chargers at 8-6 and six take on the 3-11 and 11 Houston Texans in Houston. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Chargers minus 10, over-under is 46 points. Gives them 28 implied point total, uh, 18 for the Texans. Everything on paper says this should be a whooping. You might not have Brandon Cooks with the COVID list. Rex Burkhead was ruled out last week, and and he scored. He had 19 <laughs> opportunities in a game he was supposed to be out of. That's a lot of a lot of opportunities for a game you didn't play. Sometimes I just wonder how David Johnson feels over there. Sad. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but without Brandon Cooks, this offense may have trouble moving the football. Agreed. And so Justin Herbert is the quarterback one since week three. He's locked into your lineup, and what you're hoping for is you're hoping for. Something Houston really hasn't done, which is to give up a ton of points to the fantasy quarterback position. You you think to yourself, well, Houston's a bad team, a bad defense. But for whatever reason, for whatever means they keep giving up points, they they haven't really given a ton up to the quarterback. Because they because they give it to the running back position. Yeah, so it's been it's been a while. It's been since week four that they gave up more than twenty five. Yeah, I would still be playing Herbert. Of with, course. I mean, with Keenan Allen back. Mike Williams, you know, he had the injury scare, but he should be back. Uh, and those those guys are in for me. The question is now, let's look at the running back for the Chargers. Eckler on the COVID list. We, as of the time of this recording, we don't have any other updates about that. Um, he, uh, we, we do believe that he is vaccinated, which means that in the protocols, he could theoretically make it back by Sunday. But I, I'm on the side of more preparing for him to not play, and I th- I think he won't be active. 
That's my just my gut feeling against uh, again, not a doctor or anything. I like think that. Justin Jackson is playable in both scenarios. I agree with that. He's a smash top fifteen play if Eckler's out. He's a flex play if he's in. I wanted to bring up some names though to to test that. Uh, so this is I'm sorry that is not allowed on this show. <laughs> Eckler is in. Do you play Justin Jackson or Tony Pollard against Washington? Justin Jackson. Uh, do you play Justin Jackson or Devonta Freeman against the Cincinnati Bengals? Justin Jackson. All right, let's keep moving up. Uh, Devin Singletary against the Patriots. You take the volume, the perceived yeah. volume. Yeah, I'll take the, the the targets. Okay. Okay. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Keenan Allen is is locked in your lineup, but Mike Williams is essentially a blindfold play at this point. When you put him in, you're you're just praying. I mean, it's been a long time since Mike Williams has been consistent. Been consistent. I yeah. mean, he had one kind of outlier decent game in week 11 against Pittsburgh where he scored. But you talk about touchdowns. He scored one time since week six. So at this point, you are not. I'm not forcing him I into my lineup. How does Herbert have all these touchdowns? Herbert is. Where are they going? He's six points away from the number one quarterback, and he's done it essentially without Mike Williams. Like, like what you're saying in the past, whatever, eight weeks or so, Mike Williams or has one touchdown. Keenan Allen has five on the year. Who's catching these touchdowns? Dynasty players. <laughs> Go get Josh Palmer. Sure. Because we're on contract year for Williams, right? Yes. Josh Paul, I think Josh Palmer is a really talented player. Okay, and I think he is a he he's a perfect complement to Keenan next year. So that that would be a target for me. But Mike Williams is not somebody I'm forcing into my lineup. Uh, Jalen Guyton, who's been catching touchdowns, he is on the COVID list as well. Russell Gage or Mike Williams? <sighs> Russell Gage. Brandon Ayuk. Mike Williams. Oh man. Uh, hopefully. You're not asking that, answering that question because Brandon Ayuk played last night. It's a super, <laughs> it's, a, it's a strong point. And so, how many points did he score? You mean as we predict this yeah. because we're recording it yeah, right before if, the game? If Brandon Ayuk scored twenty, I'll take those. <laughs> oh no! Hey, I I give you credit for realizing that because we're in a time warp with this recording. Yes. Um, not a good question though. <laughs> not a good one. Your start of the week, Van Jefferson against Mike Williams. Ooh, that's very close. Uh, oh, I would go – I'd probably go Mike Williams there. Yeah, did you see that one play by Jeff Wilson last night, the one where he you know, did that shimmy shake and broke it for like 46 yards? I wasn't sure how high we were going. I was like, 80? No. <laughs> and remember how mad Al was when that happened? Just using the, uh, the secret here to speak it into the universe? <sighs> The Bears at four and ten take on the five and eight Seattle Seahawks. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Seahawks minus six and a half over under is forty three. Russ Wilson's not been the same, completing sixty one percent of his passes since returning, was at the seventy two percent mark in weeks one through five. We believe Rashad Penny will be the guy again, mm -hmm. but you know came out due to injury, lost a touchdown to DJ Dallas, so Penny would be the. The start if you have to pick one. Yeah, he would. And, uh, you know, Dalvin Cook did not have success against Chicago on the ground. So their interior linemen were playing great in that game. No 10-yard runs. Matt Caff's my start of the week at wide receiver. 12 targets last week. He's been eight or above in five of six. And Tyler Lockett, we're expecting to be activated and be yeah. back out there. So you, there is value to be found here. I – in. I would be playing Tyler Lockett as a top 15, top 20 option, but he on he carries risk. He carries risk of we've seen some of these players who have missed a decent amount of time returning from COVID to not a full-time role. Again, I I would play him, but you that'll be a question you got to ask yourself as a fantasy player. Devontae Parker or Lockett if he's active? Lockett. Okay. David Montgomery looks like a very strong start. The Seahawks defense, they struggle against the run. Second to last on the year, 27th over the last six weeks. Montgomery's going to get a lot of work, I yeah. think. And you just have to lean on volume there. Yes, you do. Darnell Mooney, it's been a tougher three weeks since the, since the last breakout of sorts. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you like Cole Komet because the targets have been there as a kind of value tight end play in this game. And the, the matchup over the last six weeks, the Seahawks are 29th. I don't have a lot of confidence in Justin Fields. Uh, he's, he has been the quarterback 10 in four of his la or three of his last four starts, but the you saw the floor as well with the um, – Well, the, the last he four – He got hurt though, right, yeah, the, in the, the Baltimore game? Yeah, he only played half of that game, so that's not a – I mean, it was it was not going well until, <laughs> until before the injury happened, but he still would have had time to salvage it. I don't have confidence that Justin Fields could – exploit an okay matchup here and, and give you a top five performance, but I still think that he is safe as a as a uh, top 12 streaming candidate. What was the total, Brooks, maybe you remember this, what was the Jameis Winston touchdown or the uh, turnover number in what? his special, was it 30 picks? Yeah, he was. I think he was 30 for 30. So is Justin Fields, mind you, this is including a game in which he was injured and left early. His pace uh, since week seven, so the last six games he started. Okay. You'll be this is the good and the bad, right? He's on pace for twenty picks. Okay. And twenty six fumbles. That's a lot of fumbles. So that'd be forty five turnover pace. So that's the downside is that you're gonna give some points back. But yep. the upside is, you know, he had a ten for hundred and three rushing game. He had a nine for seventy four rushing game. He had, you know, a rushing touchdown against San Francisco. So you're playing with fire. You probably don't need to play him this week in the semifinal game, but heck, when we're recording this, by the time you hear it, there may be another quarterback on yes. the COVID list like Taysom Hill. Yeah, that's that's a very fair point, and which that's great. You sh we should be mentioning this. Whoever the best backup quarterback is on your waiver wire, if you have the room, yes. you should you should pick them up right now, either as a uh, defensive move against your opponents or just an ultra insurance move for you because you don't want Sunday to roll around and all of a sudden your quarterback is gone. I pick up Tyler Huntley in part because I didn't want my opponent to have him and in part because it was like, wait, well, you wake up and things change overnight. Yeah, because you're rolling with Herbert and we know that the Chargers have COVID is going around their locker room. At lunch today... I think Papa Josh was saying it almost feels like week 17 for all three of the playoff weeks where there's a there's a level of unpredictability that we've always been able to avoid that we can't avoid this year. And it, and it sucks. It really does. Yeah, it's it not, does. It's not fun. If you're new to fantasy football, this is not normal. No. This is not usually how it goes. No, I'm in normally a much better mood this time of year. Uh, before we jump into the Pittsburgh matchup, I want to thank today's sponsor, Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com, the best sports memorabilia site in the history of the known and unknown universe. Wow, that's the highest praise you've yet to give them. And I think I just coined that phrase. Mm. Possible? Mm. I don't know. Search the trademarks because I'm throwing it in there. But Pristine Auction, uh, it's where I go to get all my signed jerseys, my signed cleats, signed movie posters, whatever you are into as a collector, Pristine Auction They've got something for you. They have hundreds of new things up every single day. And it, because it's an auction and there's hundreds of new things every day, you can you, get some steals. You end up getting really good prices on things. Like a signed Keenan Allen jersey just went for $50. A signed Stefan Diggs mini helmet, $76. A signed DJ Moore jersey, $55. This is what I'm talking Merry about. Christmas. The, these prices are. Not what you would expect. When someone rolls up to your house and you've got five signed jerseys, they go, how much money did you spend? Oh, this like, man. Did you get a raise? Did you find some buried treasure? I find you very attractive and impressive. Yes. That's what they'll say. That's what they'll say. Mm -hmm. uh, go to bristinauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS when you sign up, and you will get a $10 credit to use for your first auction victory. Also, a good reminder. When you win a title, go get a trophy. When you get when you need a trophy, yes. go to fantasychamps.com. They have a code free ring. So if you put a trophy and a ring in your cart, use the code, the ring will be free. Yeah. At fantasychamps.com, code free ring. And the rings are dope. Yes. They are also things that make you impressive and attractive. Oh, yes. The Pittsburgh Steelers at seven, <laughs> six, and one take on the ten and four Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs are now the number one seed. All that all those doubters disappeared. Mm -hmm. And the D the DK Sportsbook line, Chiefs minus seven and a half. The over under is forty four. Chiefs will get back some defensive pieces, including Chris Jones in this game. 
They've actually been a very, very good defense over the second half of the year. And so Pittsburgh, let's start there because, okay. look, it's difficult to watch. You saw a new floor for Najee Harris this past week where he was inconsequential for the first time ever. You saw the worst game of Deontay Johnson's season conveniently scheduled for the fantasy playoffs. And then Chase Claypool at this point, impossible to trust by yeah. both his team and fantasy players. Yeah, I agree. And then Pat Fryermuth, who is a red zone weapon for the, you know, for this team, is now a real question mark with the concussion. So what what do you do? You just lock Najee in because he got you this far? Yep, Najee. Like it was seventeen opportunities. It was very bad. Twelve carries turned into eighteen yards. It was the Tennessee Titans, though, who have been a notoriously bad matchup. He just Najee has been great too many times for me to consider moving away from him. So you start Najee and Deontay and they're locked in yep. and you stop there. That is correct. On Kansas City you have the question marks with COVID. Yes. Tyreek and Kelsey. So what do fantasy players do if they have those two players right now? What's their best way to prepare for madness? Um, A, a sage burning cleanse. Oh, okay. Right. So the, this is more I mean, is we, a spiritual you got, thing? Yes, we, we have to get metaphysical. We have no other choice at this point. You but, have, uh, you ha I have a team like this, Listener League. I, I put Jared Cook on my bench. It's my only choice that I had. He's there as the pivot. Let me ask you the grossest question of all time. Uh-oh. If Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, heaven forbid, they're both out. Yeah. Do you really just throw Patrick Mahomes in there? Like we're, we've asked all these questions about Thomas Brady. Uh, if his weapons are gone, what do you do? Do you maybe pivot away to someone like Joe Burrow, Tyler Huntley with huge rushing upside if Lamar is out? But what do you do with Mahomes if his top two weapons are gone? Because we've seen the production of the other guys. Yeah, McCall Hardman does not have the ability to step up. Is Josh Gordon ready? No. <laughs> Demarcus no. Robinson, Byron Pringle. Like, I get it. I get that he's Patrick Mahomes, Mr. $100 million man, uh, Kansas City Chiefs, or uh, uh, Royals owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he owns the Chiefs, too, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 that's a fair point. But what in the heck do you do? Well, and Pittsburgh's been causing turnovers on defense, and they had a really impressive, you know, 13-point um, slowdown of the Titans last week. I didn't. I hadn't thought about this until now. I hadn't thought about it until because you were talking yeah, Steelers. He's given number one, number two performances two of the last five weeks. I think we're optimistic that those players are back. Sure. If they're both gone, like suddenly Daryl Williams looks interesting as a flex. Okay. Because he's gotten the goal line chances, and he's a pass catcher. And that's so where think, the Steelers have been bad is they might just try and run all I over I think Daryl might be a flex if those guys are out. Okay. And I think at wide receiver, you are just – like Josh Gordon is going to have his chance if that happens. But I think both guys will be back out there because you can only handle so much, right? <laughs> is that we, logical? We, that just like emotionally we we can't handle that. I mean, it snaps wise, if you just look at the last three weeks, uh Byron Pringle would have been the second highest wide receiver and Demarcus Robinson after him. So as as fun as it would be to have Josh Gordon be the semi-finals superstar hero. Uh, if you are looking at a Chiefs wide, wide out, I would go to Pringle. It's the most 20, 21 thing ever. <laughs> the Broncos at 7-7 seven and seven taking, an on, taking on the 7-7 seven and seven Las Vegas Raiders. Okay. Bunch of sevens in Vegas this week. Ooh, jackpot? Dra yeah. Well, maybe not. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line, Broncos minus one. The over-under is 41. Um, victorious Derek Carr last week, Mike. Were you so yes. impressed? Dominant performance. Last Look, he got another uh, fourth quarter comeback. Now, let me ask you. So this is an aside. Here we go. Christmas show. <laughs> like, it's so much is made, especially on a broadcast. It's, here we go. Derek Carr's got the most fourth quarter comebacks since he was drafted, yada, yada. You know, they always. Since the, the Cretaceous, yeah. Yeah. Now, I get that that's on the surface, that's positive. Sure. But, the, but there's also a reason uh, 
you had to come back in the fourth quarter saying that perhaps you were not good enough or, in fact, you you stank for three quarters. <laughs> so it's just it's, – I find it interesting that we celebrate that stat so much, even though – Derek Carr would have been a huge part of the reason they had to come back in the first place. I think that's fair. I mean, the Raiders' defense has been awful for a long time. So I think blame is is evenly spread for the past few years. I think Cousins is in that boat too. Matthew Stafford used to be in that boat. Yeah. So I just, it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Some, something that I thought about during that Cleveland game because he's coming back. I'm like, the Cleveland Browns are on their third string quarterback. We don't think Waller will be back out there. Hunter Renfro no. had his first down week in a while. The defense focused on him. And so, you know, Denver's a good defense. Last they week are. you saw a very difficult-to-watch game between Denver and Cincinnati where it was a punt fest in the first half. Not a lot of points were scored. It was, you know, now Drew Locke versus Derek Carr. At least Drew Locke is entertaining to watch. Jerry Judy was a complete goose. Honk. You can't play... Wide receivers for Denver. It's illegal now. We have, but then that's just to, to protect you. The legislature has passed that. It's the, it's like the seatbelt law. I it's, get it it's exactly. It's, I understand. And I got, but I don't, I don't want to wear a seatbelt. Yeah. I want to play Cortland Sutton. Yeah, and then you're going to end up outside the car in an uncomfortable position. <laughs> the law's here to protect you. So it is very simple, really, in this game, where Melvin Gordon and Javante will both have lots of opportunities. You need to pay attention to their health. Both have had limitations. Melvin Gordon didn't practice with a thumb and a hip thing on, uh, was that on Wednesday? So we have to have a report since then, Brooks. Can you dig, dig that up for me? He's expected to be back at practice yeah. today. Okay. And Thursday. Yeah. Meanwhile, over the course of the season, the Raiders 30th against fantasy running backs. So uh, what uh, What did you coin them? Melvante? Yes. Melvante, both are in play. To yes. Me. If you have both of them, and you don't want to play both, I blah, I would play Melvin Gordon. All right. Um, Hunter Renfro is back in your lineup, though? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's... Mm. <laughs> what? I just I just don't know what his ceiling is. He's PPR relevant, but... Yeah. Yeah, you got to play him. I, mean, look, I get he was shut down. Five targets. See how many targets Zay Jones had last week? Yeah, he was... Uh, I considered him a lot for my uh, DraftKings lineup, but I just couldn't put him in there. But up until this point, the last three weeks, 14 targets, 10 and 9. I mean, I'm still playing Renfro. That was a – maybe it wasn't a blip, but I'm considering it that. Washington, 6-8, and eight, taking on the 10-4 and four Cowboys. Cowboys are 10.5 point favorites according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. The over-under is 47.5. It's a rematch from week 13. Dallas won that game 27 to 20. If you remember that game, they dominated the entire thing until the very end when there was an inexplicable pick six by Dak and it got close. Oh, yeah. yeah you remember yeah. that game? Yes. Yeah it, was, yeah. it was, why are you throwing? I remember that. Yes. What are you doing with Dak right now? Three straight subpar performances. Doesn't look himself to me. It's almost like Russell Wilson in Seattle. Sure. Where you wonder if he's 100. That and is their defense is good, right? You don't. Dallas and Dak were a magical combination yes. when their defense was abysmal. It's not anymore. Yeah, Dak was a Dak was a top five guy, and he was he was great to start. But the last month, you were right; it has been pretty bad. Uh, so let let me give you a couple names then. Uh, the aforementioned: Would you play Russell Wilson against Chicago or Dak? I think I would. Pass. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, uh, where, where are you on that one? I would play Dak. Okay. Uh, Dak Prescott or Kirk Cousins with a tough matchup against the Rams. Yeah, I guess I'm sticking with Dak in these, but I would be – I'm not looking at him to win me my week. I think Dak is very safe against Washington to give you – like it, sometimes it's misleading, right, when you say, okay, he's finished – Oh, he's been bad. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's got one touchdown pass in each of the last three weeks. Yes, he has He has been bad. So, I mean, uh, Tyler, who's in a streamer that you're actually comfortable with this Over week? Dak? 
just streamers in particular. Well, uh, like the Huntleys or yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'd be playing him if he was starting Huntley over Dak. Okay, yeah. Um, I'd probably still stick with Dak versus Burrow, but I know you love Burrow, so you'd probably go him over Dak. I'd be willing to, yeah. Um, Zeke has been pedestrian, right? Like that's kind of the storyline here on the offensive side of the ball. Even with C.D. Lamb, people have I see people asking about alternates to C.D. Lamb this week. Oh no! Don't do that. Because he's been—it's connected, no. right? He's thirty wide receiver, seventy-four, thirteen, thirty-five, thirty-one. It does remind me that um, Washington gets annihilated. Uh, I can't remember the stat off the top of my head, so I apologize. But essentially, they get annihilated from the slot wide receiver. Uh, like their metrics are, uh, lots of fantasy points come to the slot wide receiver against this matchup. So I, CD Lamb should be in line for a strong game. And that if he has a good game, then Dak should have at least an okay game. Amari Cooper last week was a humongous disappointment. Two catches, eight yards. Mm. Are you back to the well? Are you just playing the offensive pieces in Dallas and hoping, closing your yeah, eyes? Yeah, more than likely, unless one of these uh, um, backups that, have, that COVID has thrust to the forefront, I... I Managed to get one of those, you know, like the Robbie Anderson like, and Amari Cooper. If DJ Moore is out, right? Amari Cooper. Yeah, me too. I'm um, not playing Gallup though, and Dal Dalton Schultz did have a bounce back week eight for sixty seven and one. Washington middle of the pack against tight ends. Are you trying to find another option? Like, would you play Ricky Seals Jones on the other side of the ball over Dalton Schultz? I would not. I'd play the doctor. Are you starting to fade Ricky now that we've seen a couple of irrelevant weeks? Uh, I'm not super fading him, but. But uh, I mean, the, the doctor has shown you that he can be a top five guy more than one time. He, is, he has shown that. Oh, do we have breaking news? No. Breaking news. No. No. No, 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 no. This is, this is good. Oh, this oh. Is good news. I reached. Oh. I just can't. Eat. I had to open it and verify it because I thought it was a joke. What's the source? Ian Rappaport. Okay. And this will be kind of, I mean, you will have heard of this by now, but for us it's breaking. The Rams have designated running back Cam Akers to return from injured reserve. Really? Okay. Good that's for, that's not bad. Good for you, Cam. I mean, this is not really fantasy relevant. No. We got our Christmas hats that's, on today. That's. I thought you were about to hit us with a Camaro's on the list. That's for later in the show. Yeah. Um, but that's great. That's that is it is great news. In terms of 2022, like if you can see Cam Akers do anything of value this oh season, gosh. you'll be so – like the confidence level of drafting him next year will go way up. I won't have to draft him. Because he's, you're stashing him? No, I did. I put him on the injured reserve. I stashed him I did see that. for uh, keeper potential in our league just in case. Um, well, I'm glad you did it and someone else didn't. Yeah. So that's exciting. Uh Terry McLaurin, it's been very, very difficult. Dallas is, you know, they're going to put digs on him. He's not going to do a lot. I'm just going to tell you the future. He'll catch uh, three passes for 51 yards and no touchdowns. Oh. Okay, that's his final stat line. I well, just looked it up. Well, what about, uh, can you look up some other stat lines while you're there, or is it just for no, Terry? No, I only have the Terry information. Oh, okay. Um, Antonio Gibson. Very questionable to play in this game. Hadn't practiced Wednesday or Thursday by the time we're recording this. He's averaging a million opportunities every game. Yes. So if it's Jarrett Patterson, and then it'll be Jonathan Williams behind him, you know, you have McKissick on injured reserve, you get Taylor Heineke back. I think Jarrett Patterson is a flex play. If if uh, Gibson's out? Yeah, if the toe doesn't go. Yep. I don't disagree. He'll, he should see a bunch of carries. The seven and seven Miami Dolphins, who are on fire right now, they've won six straight games. They started one and seven, and they are playing. They are playing the New Orleans Saints, <laughs> who are seven and seven. Two two teams going the oh. opposite direction. Oh Miami! And the DraftKings sportsbook line is going to change, so I don't even want to read this one. Sure. In fact, Brooks, will you take another dive and see? Since we've gotten the Taysom Hill news with Trevor Simeon, I think we probably have a different. Um, number in the book because Ian Book is starting. You gotta do the cooking by the book. You know you can't be lazy. 
Yeah, doing the cooking by the book here is going to be rough. It is. Miami is the number two defense against quarterbacks, number one against running backs, number seven against wide receivers over the last six weeks. They're one of the best in football. And now Ian Book of Notre Dame fame. Which he's – Fourth round pick. Ian Book will, as far as just a – About a, to get cooked. Yeah, probably. But I'm just saying quarterback profile of Ian Book, he will run it very similar to Taysom. All right, so the Dolphins are favored in this game. And the over-under is 39 points. And I don't know how – the Saints can score. I think this will be the singular worst offensive performance by any team in football this year. This? The Buccaneers did score zero points last week. I think the Saints can do that. Can they score negative? They can give it a go. I know Alvin Kamara is the offense, but stop him and, and you stop everything else, I feel like. Yeah, well, because Troutman's on the COVID list. Also not because of that. Are you going back to Nick Vanette? I think that was the single most useless piece of information that had ever hit the show was Nick Vanette <laughs> and his name being mentioned on the podcast. Hey. No offense. No, I, I, I understand. Um, but it's Camara only. Also, Vanette going for 40 yards this week. Oh, baby. <laughs> Did you say – I like how it was like, oh, and Vanette's about to break out for 40 yards. Um, oh, it was not a Vanette's going to break out. It's he will give you some points. Three to four points. That's not why we're here, Mike. <laughs> some people are. We're not here to say, here's a guy who's going to score some points. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Alvin Kamara, no one else on the team. Um, the other side of the ball, you know, we know the Saints defense is great. They just shut out Tampa Bay. They're not going to make it easy on Miami. The way that they win this game is Kamara, 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 defense, defense, defense. Nine nothing is the strategy. So... It certainly puts a damper on the upside of Miami's offense. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really love anybody over there. Jalen I mean, Waddle's going to climb right back into your lineup because yeah, he's active and he's been good. He will, and and get sicky probably. Well, they have in pieces, and Devontae Parker, you know, he has. Let me let me look at his just total like game log here. It started rough for him, but he's had some spots where he's been very usable for fantasy, including last week, sixty-eight and a touchdown. <sighs> But, These are not semifinal yeah, no, I, studs, if I can put it that way. Sure. You you can put it that way, but and they're going to have to get Shoot played. Shoot your shot on a running back. I'm, I would play Miles Gaskin. I would play. And you play Duke. I would play Duke. I would chase last week. Do the Duke. And that, it, do the Duke. The Dukey dance? I might. Uh, and I, I readily admit, this is chasing last week. Uh, this is. Think, me personally thinking that Duke Johnson has been the best runner for this team all year was the Jets. I get that. What do you mean he's been the best runner? I, he's only it, played one game. I know, but that he, the way that he looked against the Jets has been was much better than anything I've seen on tape from Gaskin this year. Gaskin personally. ran for more yards per carry against the Jets than Duke Johnson did. Yeah, because he's the backup. I'm just saying if Miles had been given the same opportunities, he would have had the same result. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Okay. But he wasn't. Um no, but he was over the second half of the game. And I think it's a, I think Miles Gaskin will get the opportunity. You think Duke, take your chances. They don't give up a lot of points. It's gonna come through a touchdown and it's scary. Both as, both are very risky. Yeah, I think that's the right way to put it. All these pieces are very risky in this game. The rankings, the start sit tool. Updates on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. I'm so excited about this. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. So, as we, we, knew, we knew this yesterday, Jason's not here. He's mm -hmm. getting over the flu. He's going to be back next week for championship week. But he had the boom-boom kicker on yesterday's show, and Al, he subbed in very well. Someone, one of the producers is going to have to share Jason's lineup. I think he's going to be the judge today. I got it. And, you know, Jason won last week, and then I obviously dominated Mike mm -hmm. uh, by a score of 122.7 to 121.7. Four. Thank you. So One stupid to a 
Interception. Oh, oh so many ways you could have not been the loser. Yep. But we have lineups to share for you for week 16 if they haven't been, um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> if there hasn't been news since yeah. then. Uh, but first, we have a wheel to spin. Mike, and you get to spin it. I don't know. Wheel of Shame. And spin. All right, the wheel is spinning. Jason is the got, uh, uh, Jason selected Park something Ranger, for you. Oompa Loompa, Sunny Day, Umbrella Hat. Nope, Sunny Day. So, so this one's going to take a little bit of, um, you know, you're going to need to pop that. Okay. Hat. I'm going to give you some advice. Take the hat off. Why did, where, who got my, why did you give me my sunglasses? Yeah, put on the sunglasses. Okay, do I need to go sand hat off? Sand hat off because okay. you've got a little. <laughs> Got a little sun hat coming in. Yeah. All right. So you are. I. I. <laughs> for those. Where did home, you find this hat? Uh, you know the internet's a wonderful place. So you are. You are just enjoying a sunny day here on the set, darling. <laughs> now, to be fair, Jason wanted one twice as big as that. That's not possible. But we couldn't get it here in time. That's a waste of materials. So you, I do you feel like you, you're probably melanoma safe here. You oh, I go out and do some yard work. I feel like I don't even have to put sunblock on my face. Yeah. So you, uh, and you can speak clearly and mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see. Oh, I, I can see clearly. I see a weak winning lineup in Ooh, front of me. Let's do it. Why don't you kick it off there? Uh, All right. Sun hat. I will kick it off at the quarterback position. I, <laughs> on the you side look camp. awesome. On the side the side cam, you can see <laughs> nothing. I know some of you are not watching, but Mike is wearing a very large sun hat. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm going my start of the week. I'm going with Joey Burrow. How Against much is he? The, he is 5900 Ooh, that's very, a bargain. Very, very cheap for what I think that he's going to do this week against the Ravens. I am going. My face is just shadowed out. <laughs> it's wonderful. It looks great. Um, I'm going with uh, Justin Herbert at 7,200 against Houston. Okay, paying up. Feels very safe with upside. Brooksy, what, is, what does Jason have? Jason is also going with Justin Herbert. Mm. Well, that's regrettable. Nice. Uh, Ma there we go. Mike, who are your running backs? All right, running back number one, Mr. James Robinson. All right. Who will be taking on the New York Jets. Why didn't I do that? Making Duke Johnson <laughs> look like a superstar. And at the low, low affordable price of just fifty nine hundred for some reason. Come on. Uh, then I will be taking Mr. Ronald Jones of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who will be their starter, who has averaged a uh, the, the the statistical number is a buttload of opportunities when Fournette is out. How much? How much did I pay? For, uh, yeah. His salary is fifty one hundred. So you have stud wideouts, and I am not happy to hear them. Um. I have Cordero Patterson, my start of the week, against Detroit. Sure. 6700 though. I had to pay yep. some more money for him. And then I have David Montgomery at just 5700 against Seattle's porous run defense. So I thought that was a that's, bargain at 5700 That's an uh, oversight by me not going with that. That's a great pick. And I am about to toss it to Brooks, and I know for a fact he's about to say James Robinson. Yes, sir, James Robinson and Alexander Madison. Okay, at 6800 all right, yeah. so he made the pivot today. So he had Dalvin Cook in the lineup. There's no question. Okay. Uh, Mike, you're three wideouts. So, uh, the, and in terms of names, I actually don't have what you call the superstars, but I'm going back to Hunter Renfro at 6,800. I'll take the chance that last week was just an off game for the slot machine. T. Higgins is my stack to go with Joe Burrow. I just, I think him How and much? 6,200. I think that him and Chase both have a chance to have great games. Higgins cheaper. And then Van Jefferson, I paid up a little bit. How much is he? 5500 hmm. But hmm. I wanted a piece of that Rams attack. Thank you. I wanted a piece, uh, a deep shot against the Minnesota Vikings. I went with an, a more unheralded piece of the Rams attack. I went with Cooper Cup. I had him in forever. and then <laughs> He's expensive. And then I had to... Because of today's news, I made a pivot. 9,100 for Cooper Cup. Yeah. And then I went with my stack for Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen at 7,700. Oh, nice. And then I went with um, I went with Johnson for in the Tampa Bay matchup. Tyler oh, Johnson. Oh, Tyler? Okay. And so he was 3,900, one sure. of the bargains. I like the seven targets. I like the fact that he's going to be on the field the whole entire game. 
You won't be able to see him in that hat, but he's out there on the field. Oh, I see it. He's shining. All right. So I see him. Brooksy, right. who does Jason have? Jason's paying up for a cup of coffee. Cup of, cup of coffee. <laughs> All right. Chase Claypool. Whoa. Whoa. Really? And Antonio Brown. All right. All right. And, and then, Mike, you've got the last three spots. Yeah, so I, I, I paid up for what I consider paying up for the tight end. I went with Dallas Gadair against the New York Giants. <laughs> Uh, at 5,100, 5, and my flex is the reason I pivoted out of uh, Cooper Cup because I also have Alexander Madison at 6,800, and then paid down for my defense. I'm going with the Jags, baby, against the New York Jets. Come on, Zach Wilson. Give me those picks. <laughs> I don't blame you. Makes sense. I went Cole Komet at tight end. Oh, I love it. 3,300, very cheap. Yep. For the third consecutive week, very proud to tell you this. Laquan Treadwell is a member of my DFS lineup. Derek, sometimes you just want some points. They don't change his price. He's thirty five hundred because the he, Jets. Does, he doesn't change his production. It's, it's so good 50 every week. Yards. It's so good every week. And then I did, um, <clears throat> I did go cheap. The at home Atlanta Falcons against Detroit, twenty six hundred. Could be Tim Boyle out there. Happy on defense there. I got to tell you, I don't, I don't hate this look. You don't mind the look? I don't. No, hate you it. look great. I don't hate it. All right, well, Jason also went with Cole Komet at tight end. Okay. And the Falcons defense. Okay. And in the flex spot, he's got Rojo. All right. So did, did you have Ronald Jones as I well? I did, yep. So you guys are mirroring Madison and we Rojo. Have, we have uh, the same three players then. We have the same three running backs. You do that every week almost. Well, James Robinson was 5,900. What what's, a, what's a man supposed to do? Um. I don't know, but I know Treadwell will do what he does, which is carry me to victory. 50, four to 50. Uh, all right, that is it for our del – oh, I can't look at Mike right now. You're going to keep those glasses. I know that. Those are for you. Mm -hmm. Those are a gift. Download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS this week. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy sports partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com DraftKings for – details we did it everybody have a wonderful holiday yes truly and mike will be with you sun hat and all on sunday oh i'm eh, i might have to wear this yeah i might i wish it was bigger because i'm so shiny ballerslive.com if you want to catch mike on sunday morning good luck in your semifinal matchups yes. we love you and we'll be full strength next week yeah <laughs> goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.